This chart is a chart that I got from USDA, from their Economic Research Service. And it's a little hard to read, but the green down at the bottom is the household income of farms on an average in this country. And as you see, that barely reaches $15,000. So most farms are not earning from their farm earnings enough to have anything like a living wage. And the rest of their income comes from off-farm sources. The year I was born, in 1943, there were over six million farms in this country. Today, there are barely two million. And as it was mentioned last night, the number reached its lowest about five years ago. And the work that we've all been doing in buy local and building the organic movement has changed that. So now the number of farms is once again increasing. But we still have a long way to go to get back to the six million farms that existed when I came into the world. So I think it's really important to understand this, that at this time, the price that you all are paying for your food does not cover the cost of production on most farms. So most of us who are doing organic farming, it's like entering a convent. You sign <laughs> vows of poverty. And for many of us, that's OK, because we want to live lower on, on the, food, you know, the food chain. Um, but as if we're trying to build a sustainable economy and the new economics, that is just not acceptable. Could I have the next slide? In the whole food system, something like just under 20% of all of the workers in this country do food-related work, either on farms, in processing, in restaurants, food services, um, distribution, warehousing, all of those different things. And a really significant portion of the people who work in the food system are on public assistance of some kind because the wages are so low. Next slide. This shows you the ethnicity by wage segment in the different um, parts of our economy. And as you can see, people who are black and Latino and Asian uh, and indigenous people especially are making way less wages than white people. Next slide. And this is particularly true in the food system. There are two studies that have just come out. One that was released this week, the Hands That Feed Us from the Food Chain Workers Alliance. And you can get this study from their website. And the other one is the color of food. And this is from the color of food. So it shows you who the food workers are by race. Next slide. And this shows you the race and gender gap, that the women of color are earning far less than the men. And one more slide. The managers are white men. The workers are men and women of color. And there are, of course, some white workers in, in, on farms and in all of this. But the percentage of, of white males having those leading jobs is really significant. So I think it's just important when we're thinking about the new economy to keep this in mind. Could I have the last slide? Because if we want to build a cooperative economy, we are going to have to make major, major changes. We are in, our food system is in a very, very deep hole. And I have been working on the Agricultural Justice Project where we've created standards for a food system that would have high standards, where people would have decent conflict resolution, where they would have the right to organize. Do you know that farm workers do not have the recognized right to organize in, under the National Labor Relations Act? They are excluded from the protection to associate in any way. Um, they're not protected. So we need to change those laws. 60 to 70 percent of the farm workers in this country are undocumented. Migrants from other countries who have been forced by our so-called free trade agreements to come here as economic refugees, and they are the ones doing the hard work to bring the food to our tables.